since technology is evolving on an accelerating curve, but companies are lacking this agility. And the tension between these two is, is ever increasing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this member of the month discussion with Peter Kristof, who is in Hungary. Peter, congrats on being named member of the month. You've been a community member for a, a fairly long time, probably longer than I've even been around. <laughs> and so can you tell us a little bit about your journey since you joined uh, back in, is it 2017, I think? Yes, thank you, Kevin, for this uh, invitation. And uh, I feel really honored by this member of the, the month award. And this is uh, a key and important milestone uh, for me that being even recognized like this within the, within the community. And uh, when I was preparing for this call, I checked my first contact with the uh, OpenEXO community or the pre predecessors of it. And it was back in 2015. Uh, when I was uh, introduced to Francisco Palau, one of the co-founders of our, our com community, uh, and this introduction was made by a Hungarian guy called Chaba Sabo, who was a Singularity University alumni, and he made this introduction that I should talk to Francisco because I was that time working on my PhD dissertation, and my topic was about what established companies can learn from startups when it comes to innovation management methods. Yes. And he suggested me that to contact Francisco because he's having also a PhD and was alumni, alumnus of Singularity University and working on a project or about to exit his current startup company. And that first contact with Francisco was in February 2015. And he made uh, very useful suggestions uh, how I should cover this topic, what, what are the key and important literature uh, of, of innovation management methods compared, big companies, small uh, st startups, what's in it for, for smaller ones, what's in it for the, the larger ones. And actually, at that time, he was about exiting his uh, current company, Lean Monitor, which was also a great database for making such kind of research happen. And maybe after half a year or, or some, some months, he uh, got uh, back to me uh, with, with an email. Okay, that, hi, Peter, I exited my company and I just created a mailing list because there is this book titled Exponential Organizations published last year. So that was in 2015. And then the, the first book by Salim was out in 2014. We have a mailing list of like-minded people, about uh, 100 persons uh, on a Google Groups uh, mailing list and would like to see you uh, over there. And if you feel like uh, joining the conversation or you have anything in your mind to, to share, then feel free to use this, uh, this mailing list. Mm. And actually, that was it. The first version of what we call OpenEXO today with more than 30,000 members. And that was for me ultimate learning source. Since then, uh, I have seen how small mailing list evolved into a huge and global community. So great to hear that story. With exponential organizations, an MTP is extremely important. And your MTP is around wealth and prosperity through science and technology. What inspired you towards that? And how does that actually drive your work and the initiatives that you're involved in? Yes, originally we have dual degrees in economics and IT engineering. And for many years, I have been working on, on different uh, kind of uh, software development projects. Mm -hmm. Nice ones, but nothing uh, so serious or nothing with a huge uh, impact. And after a while, I was working with multiple teams. And beside the project, we have always had some ongoing uh, discussions about the, the future of technology. So what it will bring us, what it will enable us, what it unlocks, uh, but some superficial things. And after a while, going through on several such kind of conversations, something hit my mind that, okay, there should be something more and more, more serious in the background. So let's take a look on, on that one. And actually that was uh, around 2010 when I uh, started to think about, okay, I, I should do something with my, with my experience and transfer it to somehow to deal with inno innovative projects, because I started to meet a lot more people uh, with, uh, with, with some crazy ideas and not just software developers, but I was always having some interest in, in science and working with scientists, researchers in the field of, of academia. And I met more and more people 
in, in, in that field and I was more affected uh, by that stuff. But actually, the explanation organizations topic was uh, a kind of uh, eye-opening reading, reading for me that, uh, and I could also connect the dots over there and to experience that technology is developing on an exponential curve and that uh, would also mean and result in, in solving global grand, grand challenges. Mm. And, but of course, a dreaming big is also a key skill when it comes to breakthrough innovations or large impact solutions, but uh, how you can start small. And actually uh, that was the, the sweet, sweet spot for me because I could combine my past experience, my, my attitude, this, uh, okay, having big plans is something, but also execution plays an important role. And I could start uh, with, with some scientists, with some young uh, talents on different kinds of, of projects. And so did also my, my journey started on the so-called academic track, uh, which was uh, resulted, resulting in, in a PhD dissertation in the topic I mentioned uh, uh, previously. And uh, that brought various additional connections and topics to, to learn and un uncover. And so I ended up with, with this MTP that welfare and prosperity, which was always in, in, in my focus to, to make something which is meaningful and changes people's lives positively. And, and my tools were sci science and technology, actually. So that is where I could find my, my strengths as, as well and, and my added value. So I was always looking for uh, collaborations, cooperations with, with, with people, with companies, with startups. Uh, with N NGOs who were in that track. Yeah, and so would you say that discovering the EXO model and then potentially the community has influenced that academic and professional path that you've had since around about 2015, 16, 17-ish? <laughs> yes, although I was uh, pursuing and uh, receiving my PhD, I was never a full-time academic employee. Rather, I would define myself as, as, a, as an expert in, in various fields around innovation and innovation management, digitalization, and related technologies. But I was always feeling some responsibility for the upcoming and next generations. <laughs> and okay, having a PhD means that having good relationships with some universities, at, at least with one, uh, my, my alma mater or the, the other university I received my PhD from. So I was, I approached one of the, one of the professors at the University of Pécs, which is located in Southern Hungary. It's one of the most significant universities in, in Hungary and had an idea, okay, that there is this exponential organizations methodology, which was geared towards exponential transformations, just transformation of companies. But the 10 week sprint procedure nicely fits into an academic semester because an academic semester is around like 13, 14 weeks. So we have some time before or in the middle or, or at the end. So let's, let's tailor this methodology and approach uh, that uh, it can be used in, a, in an academic context. And we aim and we targeted at, at master level international students, which means that uh, it's uh, a smaller group. So not more than 20, 25 people. So one uh, or two persons can treat these, these groups uh, nicely. And, and, but we didn't need so much change because this 10 week uh, sprint procedure and, and, and process and methodology is always, it is also very good for, for university students. Yeah. And five years ago, just before COVID, we, we started the, the first uh, course uh, in, in collaboration uh, with, with the University of Page. <clears throat> but I, I, I have to mention that uh, some people uh, from the OpenEXO community uh, has made also some pioneering steps in this, uh, so I was not the first in the community who started uh, some university-related courses. Yeah. I, I have to mention uh, Diego Saroa and Sole Lorente uh, from, from Spain, who were uh, doing this uh, already uh, at the IE Business School, at an, at an MBA uh, level, and also Augusto Fazioli, who uh, did something very similar uh, in, 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 in Italy. And uh, of course, I contacted them as for their uh, suggestions, what to do, what not to do in that. They also shared some materials uh, with me, some slides, course syllabus. So how we should build up the content mm -hmm. of this. Actually, this is how the, the, the first course with the university students started. And so it's been 
five times that it's been run. Yes. No, that's, that's correct. <laughs> it's incredible. Right? And, yes. And what would you say the impact has been on, on the students, but then also the role of the community? You, you've mentioned some folks who have been doing this, but I, I know you, you leverage people from within the community as well. So it'd be great to just hear how that's gone. Yes. Throughout this uh, semester, always uh, an important milestone or part of the course is when somebody uh, else outside of the classroom <laughs> joins us. And I usually invite one, two, three, four people from the open EXO community uh, to, jo to join and to share uh, their experiences related to the, the, the current topic of, uh, of, of the course. For example, uh, what's uh, in it for students in, in design thinking, how to make experimentation happen how to build communities around what is venture capital investment and, and how you should approach them. Some cases I invited people to do, to tell about the power of the massive transformative purpose or how or what kind of failures they have made and how we can learn from all, all failures on how to make uh, the experimentation um, attribute happen. If, if you are uh, a student and working on some very early and nascent phase of, of your projects. And I, I always measure the impact of such kind of uh, guest lectures uh, and ask the students about their, their, their feedback. And uh, I, I would say that one of the most liked uh, part of the, the, the course were always the, the, the guest lectures because they, they, have, they could see and experience that they are not just in this classroom doing this or fo following the exponential organization's methodology, but there are thousands of other people around the globe doing the same. And we have had even guests from uh, Australia to, to Silicon Valley, which was uh, for those people midnight or, or, or very early for 4 a.m. in the morning or something like that. And they, they made this uh, for the community and for the next generation of business professionals. Having people leveraging this in the real world, I think is so valuable, especially for students. Yes. I have to go back many years to think of when I was a student. But you're thinking, okay, this is all theoretical, but what about in practice? Which is what is really awesome about the EXO model, right? Is that it, yep. it is actually built off of practice. It's, it wasn't a theoretical model initially. It, it was it was giving a model to to what is already being practiced out in the world. And so, Peter, as someone who's researching EXO and obviously working with students in academia. Can you maybe share some of the most exciting trends or disruptive innovations that you're currently exploring or, or, or you're excited about? Currently, uh, space, the, the new space uh, is, in, is, is in focus. Tomorrow, I will be leaving to, to Houston to uh, be part of the International Space University Space Studies Program. And I was applying to this because I was feeling that, okay, Although I have had some clients in that field in the last two years, and I, I learned a lot and the exponential way of thinking helped me uh, go, go much faster uh, than I could uh, normally do or go or travel because uh, I was also feeling that my, my knowledge is somehow fragmented and I was always very keen on, on, on learning from the best. And I would say that if somebody is in the space domain, Regardless the, the, the specific part, so if it is technology, if it's upstream or downstream or some support activities or investment, it's on uh, highly needed uh, knowledge and content what the International Space University can provide. And I was really uh, surprised when I submitted my, my application and was looking after the history of International Space University and found that one of the founders in the 80s it was Peter Diamandis, <laughs> which also played a key and important role in, in founding Singularity University mm -hmm. and out of uh, which the OpenEXO community was a kind of spin-out uh, spin com community and Peter still plays an important role. And uh, Salim also played an important role uh, in my application because he was one of uh, the, my referees. So who uh, was writing a referral for me that I should be accepted to this course. And I am sure that it also convinced the European Space Agency to provide me a distinguished scholarship to, to cover my part of my, of my fees. <laughs> and now for me, space is in the, uh, in the focus, and I would like to transfer this knowledge back to Hungary and to, and, and to Central and Eastern Europe, also to, to spread the word among companies and also help uh, governments. And I was also, and already made agreement with two other uh, universities to, to create 
new space economy related uh, university uh, courses from that no knowledge and we will also organize a conference on uh, space and defense in, in, in October. And uh, so I could uh, take the, uh, the responsibility and the role uh, with this knowledge, with what, is, uh, what I'm expecting uh, to, to gain over the two months I will be spending in the Space City at Rice University and NASA Johnson Space Center. And um, actually, this is what I would like to uh, do and achieve to help the next generation of space startups, space companies, and space students to make bold steps in this uh, domain. Awesome. And so beyond uh, uh, space, you've also been part of various different projects and transformation projects within multinational corporations. Perhaps could you highlight some particularly challenging projects and then maybe how you applied the EXO principles to achieve success? Well, EXO uh, methodology uh, for me is always a, a guiding principle. And of course, the, the methodology, since it works and it was tried and, 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 and probed with, in hundreds of, of projects, and I could say that it, it, it really works. But when it comes to transformation, I think the first step is always to build, to build trust. And because you really need to make, cha to make changes and then change the way how companies were acting, how people are living their everyday day lives and even on the decision makers level. For me, it was always a basic establishment to start these kind of, of conversations because it is very well structured. I would say easy to understand. And this is the first step of building trust that the, uh, the person on the other side can really uh, accept you that you are a professional in that way and uh, then, then uh, also convinced that you are not something uh, i would say a racket scientist so which is which can be understood uh, by them as, as well and uh, i remember one of my first uh, projects with, with open exo ecosystem which was run by hewlett packard i was also supporting that uh, that that project and we were measuring week by week progress during the, the 10 week uh, sprint procedure and we found that uh, as more time the different teams spend on their initiatives to make change happen, the more time they would additionally need uh, to make that change happen. So uh, this is how engagement uh, is, is built over, uh, over a, a proven uh, methodology li like that. But I would say that since technology is evolving on an accelerating curve, but companies are lacking this agility. And the tension between these two is, is ever increasing. I would say that the problem or the challenge, the so-called immune system, so the resistance to change, uh, is always getting uh, higher and, and more serious. And, and fighting that immune system is one of the key challenges companies and, and people inside companies need to meet and need to fight. Yeah, I think it's important for us to remember that there's still so many organizations out there that, like you were saying, are struggling with these accelerating technologies, right? There are so many emerging technologies, obviously AI being one that's we are in the spotlight right now. Yeah. Having, having seen this, knowing the model, what do you believe has the most potential to create a positive impact in terms of these emerging technologies over the next decade or so? I, I think that the companies um, have to be aware of themselves about, and be aware of their capabilities. And we are reading so, so many different kinds of articles and they are mainly about the success stories. When something was a big hit or some, something was doing something very successfully. And because of this, companies usually don't see the sweating part of the story. And for example, when I am working with, with students, I, I usually pressurize themselves, push them outside of their comfort zones. And when they come to me to complain, okay, professor, that it's a little bit too much. We have other duties to cover. We have other assignments to write. Then I always feel that, okay, a little bit more, and then it's enough. The, the pressure and the, and the workload I expect from uh, them uh, to do. A transformation is definitely not a joy ride. So you really need to uh, invest the sweat capital uh, uh, you have to make decisions which will hurt maybe yourself as well, but definitely lots of people. But the communication becomes key. And telling about what is your intentions, what are your expectations, 
and what are your what are your plans to make that make that change happen and don't make the decision too early because your team your people need understanding and they are very good and i would say the, the best source of of getting feedback on what you are doing and of course there is the the balance between the resistance to change and the, the willingness to change is is always uh, finding the right balance is rather an art than a science in, in, in my view, but if you have something in, in your hands, uh, a methodology, then it, it really helps because it makes you uh, con- convenient and no- knowledgeable about that field. Yeah, last night I was having a chat yeah. with the CEO of a, a mid-sized company and he's read Exponential Organization 2.0 mm-hmm. recently, completely believes that this is what the organization yeah. needs, mm-hmm. you know, got his uh, chief people officer to join the community to to understand that and the one thing he he said which was quite right he said we need the culture of our company to be one that believes in exponential organizations that that understands it and speaks that language and he was very insightful saying i can't just direct it at the people because i see that that causes them to shut down and this is where he's he's asking for how do we now actually drive this in, in, in our organization? And I think this is what you've just shared, what you also experienced with the students as well. Um, yeah. you know, this It's a process. You can't expect it to just happen, you know, in five minutes, right? Yes, <clears throat> yes. And the, uh, in this context, uh, space history also teaches us a lot. Just think about when the U.S. Uh, announced that they will put a man on the moon and bring it back in uh, safely. In the early 60s, mm. by, by that time, they even know how the surface of the moon looks like. Okay, we could see it, but uh, we didn't know if it, if it, if it is hard or soft. Uh, and, and that was just one major, but lots of such kind of major challenges or unknowns. Mm. But they were very sure about that they would like to make this happen in 10, 10 years. They even don't, didn't have the, the technology at uh, that time to the rockets uh, ready, the spaceships ready. So uh, most of the parts were not there, but it was a heavy competition with, with the Russians at that, that time. But as of today, uh, you could exchange or swap the Russians with your competitors uh, if you are working in any kind of, of market. And, and the technology is there. And if uh, you are smarter and you can ride the waves of exponential technologies, then you can dream big, but you also have to be very good in, in execution how to make that, that small uh, small steps to, to make, make that happen. And I would say that massive transformative purpose is uh, currently uh, a very good, uh, for me, the best tool uh, to focus your, your scarce uh, resources because your time is limited, your human powers are limited, uh, and, 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 and your financial resources is, is limited. But this is how you can make this make the shift from uh, the scarcity-based uh, the model to the to the abundance based uh, on my mindset. Yes, that's so true. And Peter, I would love to continue this conversation for long, yes, yes. longer, but we've blown way past how long I said it was going to take. So I am going to say that I'm really looking forward to hearing how things go at the Space University. And once you're done, yep. it would be wonderful for you to share that with the community in a master in a master class around space. I, I think that would be amazing and wonderful, but really do wish you all the best there at the Space University over in, in Houston. Yes. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for the invitation. Thank you, AXO community, for your long, long-standing long support of making my uh, university course happen. And if somebody is interested in the details, I'm happy to share even the materials, the contents, and of course, the different kind of stories in the background. So thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Peter. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this, click the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like it. Take a look at our Member of the Month playlist here.